All right, hi everyone. Um, so my name is Rebecca Riley and I'm a learning technologist for the um, Innovate team. And um, I um, yeah, and I work on the um, Scarborough Tech campus. So nice to see a couple of people from um, Scarborough Tech here. Um, so in this session, we're going to be having a look at searching the internet. And I know we all know how to search the internet. You go along to Bing or Google, you type in what you want and um, you usually you usually get what you like. But we're just going to have a look at a few hints and tips on how to make um, your search a little bit more accurate and hopefully um, retrieve slightly better results. Right, so I'm going to um, share my screen now and we'll get started. Right then, I can um, I can still see the chat open, so if you want to ask me anything, um, feel free to pop it into the chat or raise your hands or just come off mute and ask me, I don't mind. Um, okay, so uh, searching the internet. Oh, I was going to say, so what's your favourite um, searching top tip? Maybe you could put it in the comments and then if we have time at the end, we're sure we will have time at the end, we can go through some of them. So if anybody has a top tip, uh, I'm certainly not an expert at this. So I'm sure you will have lots of stuff to add to this as well. So do feel free to do that. So the first thing that you could um, use to improve your searching is a few key combinations. So I thought I'd go, go through these. So these are really about working um, a bit faster as opposed to working better. So the key combinations that I could um, think of that might help you with your searching is um, Alt and D moves your cursor to the address bar. Um, plus or my, control plus or minus. Now that will increase and decrease the size of your text. The um, Alt left arrow goes back a page and Alt right goes forwards. Um, can refresh your page with Control R and F11 will toggle the internet browser to the full screen and Control and F will open the find box. Let's have a go with some of them. Right, here we are. I'm going to move off the um, search bar and I'm going to do Control. Oh, it was Alt D takes me to the search bar at the top of the page. And I'm, I'm going to have a search for banana bread. We've all been making banana bread in lockdown. There we go. Search for it. If you remember, the next one was Control Plus. We'll make everything bigger. So Control Plus. Control Minus. And I think there's a reset, which will be Control Zero. It takes you back to the normal size text. If we do Alt left arrow, that will take us back a page. Whereas Alt right arrow will take us forwards a page. So these are all things that you can just kind of like try and remember to use and keep practicing. They become second nature and they do really speed you up while you're browsing. Control R will refresh a page, if you remember. I'm not sure that's going to show as much, but we'll try it. It's refreshing that search. Someone might have added something new. Um, and F11 will toggle full screen. So this is great if you're doing a presentation. Because that's a toggle, press the same one again to go back. And um, Control F is the find box. So the find box is um, for looking for something on the page. So say, oh, well, there's lots of banana recipes. What if one of them had sultanas in? Can they find sultanas on the page for me? No results. Have I spelled sultanas wrong? Do any of them have nuts in? Yeah, I think it's bringing us up some results with nuts. It's binders down the page to the one that has um, is saying nuts on here. So that's how you find things on the page. It finds that word for you. Right, let's go back to the presentation and see what was the next thing that I thought of that might help with your browsing. So at the moment, when you're using Bing or Google, you can generally you can put in kind of a bit of a general search um, and um, it, it, you just use free text speech, don't you? Just like you would talk to a person. You can talk to your browser like that. It is possible going back many years. We used to use a lot of search criteria to try and help improve the search when the, 
the search engine didn't used to be quite so intuitive and these can still be really useful for example <clears throat> if you use a minus before a word it won't add that into the search so if you like banana recipes but you don't like banana bread you can put minus bread and you won't get that um, if you use plus you definitely do like banana bread because you put that in before bread it will make sure it's there in the search using a star means that you want anything banana bread with any word after it so that's kind of like banana bread recipes banana bread um, pictures banana whatever it is the star is kind of like an open result quotation marks um, are great if you want a very specific phrase so if the only thing that you want to search for is banana bread recipe in that order then the search the um, speech marks will help that as a general rule, capitals are ignored on search engines, as are small join the up words like a, an, and etc. They usually just, um, what I'm saying, the, <laughs> etc. are usually ignored. And it, as a general rule, it's best to drop the suffix when you're um, searching. So don't use the ing, just say baked banana bread as opposed to baking banana bread. So that's a few top tips there on how to phrase your search. You can also be specific about the type and um, location of what you're looking for. So um, if, for example, you really only want PowerPoints about banana bread, so you're looking for something you can print out easily, a recipe you can print out easily, you could search for the file file type. So let's try that in our search now and see what we get. Using the controller file type. And our file type is uh, PowerPoint and we're looking for any PowerPoints about banana bread. And here we go. Looking down, you can see it's a PowerPoint presentation. There we go. I'm saying PowerPoint, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking PDF, and in my mouth, saying PowerPoint. So, what I mean is, if you're looking for a PowerPoint presentation on how to make banana bread, that makes more sense. So, that should pick those up. You could try um, whatever, well, whatever file type it is that you want to look for. Let's, what's the, um, or you could say that you definitely only want to search within one site. So if we say site semicolon bbc.co.uk banana bread, then that hopefully will only search within the BBC site for banana bread. Let's try that one. And yes, we're only getting results now from the BBC, as you can see here. Well, we see more BBC that's my presentation and you can also search in the url so this possibly isn't gonna um make well let's try it we'll try it in the uh, url we want the url to contain banana let's have a look and see what we get any urls that have the word banana in them so Wikipedia, banana is put at the end, so they've made it kind of as part of the URL or indeed part of the title. Title, colon, banana, we should only get pages where the title of the page within the HTML code is um, about bananas. So there we go, lots of um, Lots of pages there with banana in the title. What else can we have a think about? Other ways to search. So the way that we're searching by doing a text input is definitely not the only way um, you can use your Bing or Google search. We can search um, with uh, voice recognition if we'd like to. Banana bread. And you're possibly more used to using that on your phone, um, which obviously it works really well if you've got Siri. Siri will um, search for you or um, you know, voice recognition on the Google search on your phone work brilliantly. Um, 
my kids make fun of me for using it. I do use it all the time. It's a lot quicker than typing. You can also, though, use an image to search with. So if you already have one image that you like the look of um, or that you want to rec you want to know what it is. So let's um, browse for an image that I might already have. Ooh, not sure that's what I want. Um, oh, here it is. So I'm uploading this picture and it's found some sites that have used that exact image and it has found some sites that have used an image very close to it. That makes sense. So that's quite useful. So if you were um, had, I don't know, if you had an image that kind of was what you wanted to use, or maybe you weren't allowed to use that image, maybe you didn't have the rights to use that, maybe you wanted to look for a similar image, or maybe you wanted to be able to identify the person within that image, you could use the image search to um, search using that image instead of a keyword. Right. Next, I'm going to move on to search filters. So, um, let's have a look. The um, to start off with, there's um, one, two, three, four, six major filters on a Bing search. I'm going to use Bing as my example. You can search all. You can search just for images. You can search just for videos. Um, search for maps and new. So let's have a look. So I've got my search here already done. Set that off again. And at the top you can see I'm searching all things initially to do with banana bread. And um, so it's a combination of some images, some recipes, some articles, what have you. The work one will just be searching within works. So we'll ignore that for now. I can search for images which would reduce my search to just images, again, just videos. Again, I'm going to be let down here now because I don't think there's going to be a map of banana bread. It's really um, it takes me over to the, um, the mapping thing um, and away from my search. So I'm just going to whiz back for now and have a look at news, news articles. <laughs> I didn't think there would be news articles for banana bread, but of course there is. Home cook reveals how she can make banana bread in just three minutes, no oven required. And also, of course, shopping. Oh, Belvita, banana bread. So there are products to do with banana bread that we can buy as well. So um, the one I'm going to have a look at is the um, images. And let's have a look what other filters are available. So I've got my images of banana bread. And that's great, but I can add more filters to this search if I click on this filter icon over here in the corner. And the next level of filter is the image size. So kind of like how good a quality to say you wanted to use it as um, the background of a presentation you were making. You might only want large pictures and they give you the dimensions here. 4000 pixels by 6000. That's a pretty um, high quality image there. You can choose colours and I think this will probably, it's not kind of a general theme of colour, shall we say. Let's try this and see what I get. There, it has gone a bit more orangey, so it's kind of if you were aiming to fit in with some kind of theme that you were doing. Oh, look, these have gone, that's interesting. All of these have got blueberries in them to make them a bit bluer. I'll go back to all. So the images are great if you're looking for... You know, say you were doing a presentation and your presentation was themed around yellow and you wanted to choose an image that was going to match that. That's quite good. The type of image this is going to be um, if it's a photograph, clip art, line drawing or animated GIF or a transparent GIF would uh, be a PNG with a transparent background. So something that you could use over the top of something else there. Um, most of these are photographs. I'll have a look and see if there's a line drawing. Hey. There are some line drawings of cakes and bananas, so that's great. Layout is, do you want a uh, portrait, landscape or square? And if 
it was if you were searching a topic that had banana bread obviously doesn't lend itself to having pictures of people with it but if you were searching something say happy students students or teenagers or whatever it was you were searching you could say you just wanted the faces or the head and shoulders and the bing search would be able to you know work that out for itself the date it was added here which um was it added in the past 24 hours the past week the past month or last year and here getting on to the one that i think is going to be the most useful is the licensing because obviously um when someone uploads an image to the um web it's there it's the photographer's intellectual copyright as it were they are copyrighted to the person who created the image or took the photograph um and within the search it will identify the kind of creative commons license that it's got if you were in my session on creative commons <laughs> this morning i'm sorry i'm repeating myself but here you can choose whether you want your um the image that you're going to have to be free to share and use in the public domain means anybody can use it um it can be free to share and use you might be able to use it commercially or you might be able to um modify it and use it or modify it and use it commercially choose the one that's appropriate to your usage and then you'll notice that the images change to give you the results of the ones that you know fit your filters and if you um want to clear all the filters there's an option there as well so that's um a more in-depth look at how to search for images and i think that's um quite useful there Let's have a look at how we're going to um, work with images. I don't know if I've got a slide for this. Let me have a look. Oh, licensing. Let's have a whiz through this. So, um, yeah, on videos, um, the, there is a filter within YouTube as well, just the same as on the imaging one. So you're on YouTube, you do your search, and then you can filter it to just look for ones that have Creative Commons licensing applied to them. Um, I'll just do a really quick demo of that. I'm going to go to YouTube. Oh, I can search for banana bread again. It should bring me up lots of people baking banana bread videos, which it has. However, if I wanted to use those, say, in a session, you know, in my teaching session and show it to my students and add it to one of my online courses, I would need to check that that had some kind of Creative Commons um, copyright available to it, which um, I would do by clicking on the filter, click on Creative Commons, and then it will bring up the ones that have been licensed for use. And you can look at them in further detail if you want to and it probably tell you what the exact creative commons license is but at least you know the ones that people are prepared to share with you so let's have a quick look at um working with images so we're here we found the images that we like which one do we like this one's quite nice the first one you can um one click on the image will show it a bit bigger and then if i wanted to use that somewhere else i have a couple of options available to me i can right click on it and i can either just copy the image copy the image if i copy the image it will put it into the um onto the clipboard of my computer and just um, store it there for me until i use it and then i can go to any product that will allow me to paste and paste into it so if i was just going to move that to word i could just copy that image and paste into Word. I can, if I would rather, save the image as, at which case it will bring up a dialog box and allow me to save it. And then I could import it, so put my caps on, um, into, say I wanted to put this, I don't know, into Canvas or whatever, I could import it from the, um, wherever I'd stored it on my machine, or I could save it there and create like a bundle of images as a resource kind of thing. And the other thing um, that's worth looking at is if you don't want to use the whole image and you want to apply some kind of editing to it, it's worth having a look at the um, snipping tool or um, 
snip and sketch tool. Oh, have I clicked on something? No, the snip and sketch tool. And you do that by opening that on your um, opening that in Windows 10. I'm going to open the snipping tool this time, which looks, I'll bring this across so you can have a look at it. There we go. And it just floats as a little panel on top of your other windows that are open. And if I want to do a new snip, you'll notice it's whited everything out. And then I can draw a um, marquee around the bit that I would like to use. And the snipping tool has actually copied that onto my clipboard already. So I'm all set now to go to Word and paste that. And I will only be pasting the little bit that I've taken, um, not the whole image. Um, I can also, if I want to, do a file and save as, and save that snip if I would rather um, save it into a folder and then re-import it somewhere else. So don't forget that that's there available for you. I find it really, really useful because obviously I create a lot of resources for um, teaching IT and the um, you can also add menus and other things into it. So if I snipped somewhere up here, you'll notice it's added in everything from the screen because it works as kind of like a screen capture. Okay. What's the next thing we'll look at? Saving and sharing a page. So when you have a web page, you can save it as a PDF or you can save it as a OneNote and you do this um, from the um, print menu. So let's have a look at that. Say that we found um, a nice recipe that we like. I'm going to do all things. Um, here's a, a recipe in Delicious magazine. And I would like to, I'm not sure what's happening. Oh, it's an advert coming. And I would like to save this. So if I do a um, print, if I go to the uh, three dots on the right hand side, the ellipses, and choose print. And instead of printing it to my printer, I can save it as a PDF and save that out and it will save me a PDF of that particular way, that particular page. You might have noticed if you try and save a web page, it's, um, it's virtually impossible to actually save a, a web page in any format onto your PC that you can then reuse unless you save it as a PDF. So that's a great way of storing information into something that you can use again. You can also, from that same print menu, um, send it straight to your OneNote. So if you do use OneNote a lot, you can um, select that from the menu and it will send that straight to a OneNote and allow you, allow you the option of choosing which one as well. The other thing I just wanted to point out is that you can, and that you're probably really used to sharing web pages from your um, let me cancel this from your phone, but of course you can share web pages, um, share the web address using the share on your PC as well, and it will pick up the things that are available to your, you know, PC, your contacts, or your um, OneNote, or send it to your phone, or you can copy the link for the page, or you can send it in an email. So if you've got that set up, that's quite handy to use as well. So that's how we get them to other people. <coughs> now, if you're in um, Phil's um, session on accessibility that's just happened, he was talking about favourites and collections and um, he knew a lot more about it than I do, but I have found um, collections really, really useful. So I'll just cover those as well. So you probably... Um, you probably have used bookmarks and favourites and that is pretty much where you just um, click on the little star here and that will, you will be allowed then to add it to 
your um, favourites list. So we've got a favourites bar in Bing here. So if I click on here, the favourites bar, it will add this page to my bar. So you've really got to decide yourself how you want to use this. In your favourites bar, you might have everything that you're currently working on, in which case, and then clear it off for the next job. Or you might have everything really important to you that you need you know, access to whenever you need it. So, you know, it's up to you. You can also, uh, by clicking on the star, save it in other favourites um, so that that will give you extra space for saving them. And then when you click on the manage favourites, you'll see it's down here. So you can add as many as you want then, not limited to what will fit on the bar. Ooh, clicked on something. The um, collections, however, are here under this um, icon. Still out of those, no trues page. Um, and what collections are, it's a bit like favourites, but just a lot more involved and you can create kind of like collections of favorites so these are all my collections that i've um, made over the past uh, few weeks the ones that in like my current work anything i need for my marking stuff like that use useful stuff which is a nice descriptive title so i could create a new collection and i could call that you know i don't know banana bread like i do and i'm going to add the current page to that collection. And there we go. So this is what well, if I go back to uh, close my collections, open my collections, I've created a new set of collections and in there I've uh, got some um, I've got my sorry the uh, the one the one link that I added. I'll add this one now, I'm adding another one, which is this banana bread recipe from Delicious magazine. So you can see I'm building up a collection of um, links here to things that are useful to do with banana bread. And the, the one thing that um, Phil showed me, which I, I hadn't noticed before, which I found really useful, is you can add notes to these. So if I had to even note, great taste and texture. So you could add notes to yourself by right clicking and adding note to each of these um, items in your collection. And you can also, using here, export the whole collection into a Word document or, one, or a OneNote. So essentially you could use this if, for example, you were, I don't know, teaching, cooking and you were doing, a, you know, like one week you were going to be doing banana bread and you needed to put your resources together. As you were out on the web doing lots of research on banana bread, you could build up this collection. And then at the end of it, export that whole thing into Word, you know, tap it with it, and there you've got some a nice handout already. So it's a great way of doing your research. So that was collections. I'm just going to close them down so they're not on my sway. Cookies. Oh, I just put this in at the end because um, just to mention that um, you know that your um, the way that Google or Bing always seem to know they always find what you're looking for <laughs> because they're tracking your tastes using cookies, which are little bits of um, software that, that we all know about cookies, little bits of software that um, websites leave on your computer so that. Um, you know they know what you like and that's why you know you might search for some new shoes on your um you know in, in your browser thinking you might buy them and the next time that you go to facebook it shows you an advert for the same pair of shoes and carries on showing you it even when you've bought them and that's what cookies are there for and they, they make your browsing experience feel more intuitive so uh, sometimes though that can work against you for example if you have more than one Windows account and want to check your email on a different account, it can be quite happy to quite hard to get away from that account. And that's where you can use a private browser. The private browser does not respond to the cookies that you have on your computer and doesn't save any new cookies. So say I wanted to log into a different account, try a private browser, 
Another thing you could try it with, I'm not saying this will work, but if you've, um, your computer will also know how many times you've checked those flight costs and how many times you've checked the cost of that holiday. And it will know how interested you are in that holiday. And it's probably boosting the prices up. So checking it again one more time before you book in a private browser is probably not a bad idea. Um, also, if you um, are not getting the result you like, say, for example, you're always returning the same results on your search every time you search and you just want to you want to try searching without the cookies on, then you could try a private browser for that. So I'll just show you how to do that. It's the ellipsis at the end. And then open a uh, new in private window. And you know that you're in private because it goes all black. And then just search as normal in here. And you might find that your results are just slightly different. Okay, I'm gonna to return to the meeting. I'll have a little chat about that. <laughs> 